It is my deepest conviction that in order to not lose the war against secret services, pushing for more and more surveillance laws all over Europe and all over the world, we need events like this to connect, to share, and also to support initiatives that fight for girls that are really worth fighting for. And the next speaker did something really, really impressive. Together with friends, she built an alliance against the surveillance law in the Netherlands, and they collected more than 400,000 signatures, and the next step will be to start a referendum. I'm really impressed, and I, ho I hope you are too. Please give a very, very warm applause to Ni Nina Bolsons. Um, hello everyone, thank you so much for coming, it's an honor and uh, I hope you had a great congress so far. Um, so yeah, my name is Nina, I'm one of the five students who organized the referendum uh, and I'm going to tell you all about like how we did it and what's coming up and what this all means in the greater scheme of things. So um, first of all the law, because we need to know what we're talking about here. Um, what does it contain? Well. In Dutch, we call it the sleepwit, which is a, um, a bringing together of the words sleepnet and vet, which means something like the dragnet law. Because one of the um, allowances in this law is that um, intelligence agencies will be allowed to intercept untargeted traffic on the cable. Um, that means, for instance, when you live in Rotterdam and there is a suspect uh, living in the area, then all of your traffic on the cable will, um, can be collected, analyzed and stored for up to three years, which is a really fucking long time. Um, so that's one part of it, but aside from that, they will also grant, um, get access to basically any database imaginable, which is even um, real time. So the government is saying this is not a proposal about mass surveillance, like with the Snoopers uh, charter. Um, however, in implementing that many dragnets, because there's not a maximum to it, and we don't know how big they will be, and they don't know what they are looking for. Um, and also adding up to that the access to all these databases means that you can collect a massive amount of data, which in conclusion is therefore mass surveillance. Um, another problem is that it will allow the hacking of third parties, which, so if you have a terrorist suspect, you can not just hack them, but also their mom or the journalist that they have been speaking to. And obviously that leads to like hoarding zero days when you all get way less secure and it's all bad. And they can also um, exchange this data unanalyzed with foreign countries. And this is where uh, human rights advocates are really worried about because these countries don't necessarily respect our freedoms or our rights. So um, yeah, this is all really bad. Um, and its consequences, well, that's usually what I talked about when I do a presentation about this, but you are basically the community who has taught me this, so I feel like preaching for the choir here. But just to go quickly over it, it's a chilling effect where you like start self-centering because you know that all of your actions might have a consequence in the future. And obviously it's also a loss of privacy, and privacy is such a, a basic thing, it's a really meta right, like you can't really have freedom of speech or even freedom of thought if you don't have any privacy. because our online behavior is like a blueprint of our minds, and that's where they're gonna pry into. And well, yeah, you know the story, but that's that's kind of where I'm like, meh. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that was our our vibe. And we um, so in the summer of this year, um, the law got passed actually, and there was some upheaval about it in like upper levels, like there were lobbyists and lawmakers. Um, making a fuss about it, but there wasn't really like a broad public debate. And we thought, what the fuck? We can't let this happen. Um, what's the thing that we can do now that this law has already passed? Well, if you're just a regular citizen, um, the only option is to organize a referendum. And so we thought, let's do that. Um, so 
oh yeah, so. <laughs> Thank you. Um, in order to organize a referendum in the Netherlands, you need to get 300,000 signatures on a population of 17 million. Um, and referenda aren't really like salon fe here. <laughs> the, um, after Brexit and after the Ukraine referendum that we had, people tend to view it as a really populist, sort of bad tasting subject. Um, but we wanted to try it anyway. And at first it went pretty well because we had the first day and we had like 5,000 signatures, next day 10,000 signatures. But that was our little bubble, our little, like the hacking community and the privacy people. And we got um, a lot of support also from a rather controversial right wing um, blog called Geen Style. Um, and that got us up pretty well at first. And then. Yeah, nothing happened. It was just really quiet. But then we got uh, contacted by Amnesty International and they said, look, we've tried so hard to stop this law and nothing worked, but we want to help you out. And they, like, they actually got two airplanes flying around the country saying, I'm being followed and so are you and you need to protest on Sleepwet.nl. And they, they print a million, a million flyers which were all stacked up in their office and we went out to like um, uh, hand them out in like markets and such to sort of get out of that bubble. It was interesting because once you started talking with people on the streets, um, they didn't really have an opinion about this. There weren't that many people who were just neutral, which I kind of expected. Uh, yeah, this is us handing out flyers. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but then it didn't really like make massive change. And we, were, we had six weeks and we were already in the fourth week and we hadn't even gotten a hundred thousand signatures and I already was having like rage fits in my room like yeah all these people that say they're about privacy but they don't actually help out and I need more support or where is everybody and all these parties that don't want to like touch the referendum. But then we got a message from Arjen Lubach which is a comedian in the Netherlands, a really popular satire show and he said uh, yeah um you're gonna be in the episode tonight, so you might wanna get some extra servers. And we're like, what? Um, so yeah, Luca and uh, Yogan just spent the entire go. And during the episode, they were still busy with it. And it was like, um, it was 18 minutes in which he completely wrecked the entire law. It was, his message was basically, imagine your doorbell rings and there's two people outside and they're government officials and they say, well, hello, here's a nice little box and it contains a microphone and a camera and we're going to install these. We might not look at it, but we might. Would you put them up? No fucking way. And that's what everybody said. And then like, things started rolling. Like, um, the episode on its own like shut us up, but then it also resulted in the press considering us actual news because beforehand we were in this catch-22 where they said like, if you're not in the news, you're not news, but if we bring you in the news, we're making you news and therefore we are not neutral on the referendum idea, so we can't talk about you. But after Lubach, they could. So it sort of gave a push um, for a momentum. <laughs> and this is, this is how it went. So like, it's a really big stage. Um, this is our little hackery privacy bubble that we have here. And then this is efforts with amnesty and all that and flyering and then there is the episodes. And, just <laughs> and you can also see the really, the spike like up here is where we told the press we had 300,000 signatures and everybody's like, oh wow, let's talk about this. Okay. Um, so, things that we noticed during this, because I think it's interesting to think about what happens when you take the privacy and the digital rights uh, discussion to a national level, because it doesn't happen that often. Um, now first of all, people do tend to give a shit, which was unexpected. Um, as soon as you start talking about them, like, it wasn't that much effort to make them go, oh yeah, this is a point. And it were really different kinds of people as well. You see also, um, there is not really a left-wing or a right-wing focus. So privacy is such a fundamental right that it's like, yeah, who's against freedom of speech? Nobody. Um, and therefore you could see that there was from every side of the spectrum um, ac uh, activities around this. And I think that was also part of the success um, because yeah, we have many differences, but it's good to sometimes combine them for 
a greater good. Um, yeah, so news agencies are doing a lot of polls because they all want to be the one that predicted what's going to be the outcome. And that what you, what you see is interesting that people below 35 tend to be massively against this law and then people over 65 tend to be in favor. And I think that's interesting because I think as a millennial, like my entire identity is based upon what I did online as a, as a teenager. And um, that's like where all my political ideas come from, it's why, why I look like this. And, but so it's a very intimate thing. And then for people over 65, it's more of a email machine and sometimes get angry at Twitter machine. So it's a, it's a public sphere. And that's also where this tension is coming from because yeah, we kind of know the age differences in uh, lawmakers and such. Uh, oh yeah, and um, what I found pretty worrying is like we have these discussions with uh, politicians and stuff and you go like, yeah, but the algorithm this, and they're like, yeah, but the logarithm this. And um, what was worrying is that they said, look, there's not really a problem because we might collect all of this data, but then as soon um, we immediately throw away everything that is unnecessary, um, and then you're all fine. But they completely forget that like big data and like the analysis of that is not magic, that there is actually an entity um, looking at what you're doing and thinking of what the consequences of that should be. And therefore there shouldn't be a difference in the ethics around it. And there is both a comparison and combination of glorification of the tech, whilst also there being a um, ignorance about it. And I think it's a really toxic combination. Uh, so, um, going on, I believe that this, is, this referendum is about just more than just privacy. Looking around, um, you can see that governments and also um, surveillance capitalists are saying, look, you might have all these rights and all these freedoms, but as soon as there is a computer involved, you don't understand it. So these rules that we build up no longer apply. And it's really dangerous, and I think that people aren't as fast to respond to it because of that bullshit cyber um, idea around it. Um, so yeah, and, I, and I'm worried that because this law is sort of like a baby version of the whole the, the social credit score, for example, and I really don't want to go to such a level, and also because I'm really worried that once we are there, we will no longer be able to change it because the dissidents will already be known before they even know themselves that they are dissidents. Um, and I think in order to make do this, I think we need to make our movement more mainstream. Um, so, like, I kind of would like to walk into the urban outfitters and like next to the feminism t-shirts and the environmentalism t-shirts is like, hey, I'm a privacy activist and it's a horrible like capitalist way of doing activism, but it does sort of show that it's sort of a, a broad thing and it's, it's so important that we also include people that we completely dislike um, to make it broader and yeah. It's, it's not just because it's handy for ourselves, but it's also our responsibility. Because if we're not going to do it, nobody else is going to do it. So, it's, so as a community, we need to get out of our ivory tower to like change the system instead of subvert it as well. And also subverting it. <laughs> Thanks. So, um, where we are now, we are going to have a referendum on the 21st of March. Yay, and um, the state of affairs now is that the government said it's an advisory referendum, so they can completely ignore the outcome. And they've already said that they're gonna do that, and I think it's the stupidest idea ever. Um, especially because I can see a momentum growing where all these different groups are getting together and speaking out about it. So it, it would not just be um, ignoring the entire democratic uh, process and the voice of the people, but also hurting a growing movement that will then leash out even harder, in my opinion. So they better not ignore it, motherfuckers. Um, <laughs> One other thing is that um, I, 
had this really naive, still like a little bit left of a trust in the, in the government, right, in the system. Turns out, they keep saying that um, this law is necessary because it, by the current law, it is not allowed to intercept cable traffic. And of course, I understand that you need to be able to do that for actual terror suspects. But it turns out they've been doing that since like 2002. There's actual numbers for the number of cable interceptions they've already done. And it's a complete lie. And it's a narrative they're spreading out. Um, so that's rather disappointing. And they've even been repeating it so often that at some point I just started to shut up that cable traffic was already um, true. But to be clear, they're already intercepting cable traffic, just not untargeted. So what's next? Um, yeah, we're going to campaign our ass off. Well, actually, uh, Jorgen and Tijn are going back to studying, and Marlou and Luca and I are going to campaign. Um, so something that's important to get rid of is the whole the fake privacy versus safety um, idea because it's it's just it, it doesn't make sense like your your privacy is a you, you have your privacy privacy is a human right why do we have human rights to protect citizens what do we do when we harm human rights the citizens are less safe so <laughs> and it's not even effective and a good thing also again credits to Arjen Lubach he introduced the term tegerschwalbe which is like uh, when a politician gets criticized, they can be like, ah, oh, no, don't criticize me, it's because of the terrorists. And now they can no longer get away with that. So that's a good term. I, I would like to keep that in the thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm starting to repeat myself, but I want to include as many different kinds of groups of citizens to make this a broad thing so that everybody can find why they should care about this law. Um, Aside from that, we also uh, started a foundation, which at first was just to like get subsidies for the campaign. But we're like after this, we're going to do like direct action stuff against master veins. That's the pitch. Oh, that's the end. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to Q and A. <laughs> And um, so I will say first your question. Thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot for your uh, presentation. I'm actually living in the Netherlands at the moment, so I'm really happy to see uh, such campaign uh, organized in the Netherlands. I have a really small question. Uh, did you have support of other uh, association or foundation like Bits of Freedom or other uh, in the Netherlands, but also outside the Netherlands for what you've done? Yes, good question. I forgot to say that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, we're getting really good support from Bits of Freedom now in the, in the campaign and also Amnesty International is ready for battle and the Pirate Party. Um, yeah, and, and yeah. So there is a... It's also... It's, it's not like we are the core of this campaign. It's really a decentralized sort of thing. So everybody is just um, there to... Um, uh, yeah, to, to do their own thing, and I think that's really important because I, I realize I'm, I skipped a slide, but I, I really want you all to um, think that nobody else is going to do it unless you are going to do it. So please all speak up about this and talk about this referendum. Also, like Amnesty and Bits of Freedom, but also individuals. And if you um, are not living in the Netherlands, it's also important for us because we need international support because the Netherlands is really fucking small. And when our prime minister sees that the big boys like Germany and France are talking about it, then they will be, have more incentive to actually do something with it. And at the same time, your governments might realize that they won't get away that easy with with such mass surveillance laws. So everybody, please be as loud as possible about this thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll put that slide up one second. We have another yeah. question from the internet. Yes, thank you. Um, the IRC wants to know, do you have hope that the, this surveillance thing will go away ever? 
Um, yes, I do have hope, otherwise I, w I would just sit in my room and be depressed. But I think I'm a both an optimist, so I do think it's possible, but I'm also a cynic and I think it's going to be really fucking hard. Um, so it's our responsibility to keep fighting for that. Uh, yeah, but I think it's possible. I mean, like, um, 200 years ago you wouldn't think that women would be allowed to have a life, and that changed as well. So if they could do it, why can't we do it? <laughs> The next question. Um, I would like to add a small thing because a lot of uh, people are talking about no, no, we will only keep the part of the disc, uh, of the data. <coughs> Please that we, question, okay. not okay. not comment. But uh, the, the the they say we will uh, destroy irrelevant data. But the point of big data is there is no irrelevant data, so there is no need for destroying anything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. No question, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, you know what all what a question is? Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to, to make sure. Um, the next question there from the back. Uh, so I was wondering, you said if the referendum was ignored, then you would escalate. Do you, like, what forms of escalation are you thinking of? And do you think that's a good thing, escalating? Or, <laughs> like, I, I wasn't sure in your opinion on this. Um, well, I hope you're not from the AFD, but um, no, I, I, I'm not, I'm, escalation sounds like we're like, oh, rah, but I think, I, I mean more an sort of escalation in the public debate because it's already having this momentum where everybody's starting to talk about it. And now that because I believe people will, might realize that they care about this and they even have a voice about it, um, it will become a much stronger movement if they ignore it and if they don't, I believe. If, if that answers your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. <laughs> For next question, number two. Hi, thanks for your work. Uh, I promise this is a question. Uh, so in terms of escalation, uh, I've, we, we see that once you get on the news, the satire, the, you know, the John Stewart's, the Daily Shows, and, and that guy who uh, gave you all your publicity, wouldn't be the best way to get mass understanding by the populace and backing you is to kind of have sustained episodes. Do you have a, uh, um, a, a communication with, with the producers? Are you able to get a subsequent episode and kind of keep that fire burning? Um, well, I feel like it would be sort of unfair to just sort of keep, actually there, were, there was a group of people who started writing them like, oh yeah, you really need to talk about this episode and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I think, I think it's more of a result of all the hard work that we put into it that the episode was there. And, <laughs> And, um, and also for, like, it, it wasn't like that solved everything. It was more because there was so much going on that then you couldn't really not talk about it. So I wouldn't want to sort of artificially enforce that. I just want to like do a lot of shit and then make sure that the right people respond. Yeah. Another question from the internet. Yes, I have a question from a Dutch citizen. Is there anything we should do Accept voting? Um, yeah, you need to... to okay. Um, the most important thing is that this discussion keeps zinging around. So what we noticed with uh, doing the signature thing, like, yes, you can put up posters and do like the social media campaign and stuff, but uh, actually you have such a big national discussion, it's really important that you actually talk to people that you know. So if, for instance, um, you have a community that people like to listen to, for your teacher or, I don't know, um, those people that stand in a church, um, like, please also reach out to your own communities, these groups of people, and also talk to your mom and to your dad about this, because that way we can cover the whole 65 plus area. Next question. Yeah, uh, first, thank you for the super leg talk. Uh, also, perfect follow-up question to the question before. I live in the Netherlands, but I'm not a Dutch citizen. Um, what are ways for me to get involved and engaged with the campaign? Yeah. Um, 
just, just quick, are you, do you have like a tech background? Or something? No. Okay, well, <laughs> we kind of need also more, because um, I mentioned the hacking of third parties, we need more people from our community actually to speak up about that as well, because we have a lot of journalists and human rights activists and stuff, but not really the cyber people. Um, and, um, yeah, um, we're, we're setting up, like, maybe if you, if you follow like what we are going to do, we're going to like make flyers again and organize events that there can be discussions and stuff. You could also like organize a discussion things. There's actually still subsidies you can ask for, so you can get 5,000 euros for individual campaigns if you want. Um, or maybe that's already ended. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, talking is really easy, but then also maybe more creative things like events and t-shirts and all that. And then we also make like, things that we can hand out, like flyers. Here are some flyers, go stand in the street and hand out flyers, and here's a poster, put up the poster. So, yeah. You can email us, and then we'll send you stuff. <laughs> and, oh yeah, the, somebody's setting up a mail server right now, so please don't mail now. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll also put a key up somewhere. <laughs> Next question, number three. Can you sign online or offline, and what's the ratio between online and offline signers if there is online signage? Uh, yeah, that, that was interesting, because we, we put up a website, that's basically our main thing, and that's where people could sign online. Um, but there were a lot of people who also, basically what we did, <laughs> you have to hand in paper signatures, but you're allowed to collect them online. So we got all these signatures and then printed them on the forms. 400,000 signatures is a lot in paper. We drove them to the other side of the country, handed them back in, and they put it in the shredder. That was that. And then people could also <laughs> send them themselves, and I believe there were about 10,000 people who did that. Also, if you were uh, living outside the Netherlands, you had to do so. And it was also like, <laughs> Uh, was a bit of a paradox because we had to collect a lot of data, like your 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 place of birth and and your signatures, and of course everybody was really a bit weirded out by that. So we told those people, like, yeah, we can't do anything else, but if you don't trust us, please just write to the thing. But what do you mean by shredder? Are they gone or do they count? Yeah, so the the um, they scanned them all in and then they, it went into their system and then they shredded the thing. So, yeah, a moment of silence for the trees. <laughs> Next question is from the internet again. Thank you. A sleeve red anal needs to be updated. For example, the 21st March is not mentioned there. Will the website be updated soon? Um, yes. Um, but because we are moving, the website was basically there to do the whole signature campaign. Um, and it's not entirely clear of what kind of role it's going to play in the campaign. Um, but yeah, well, I'll, I'll update it. It's good that you say. <laughs> okay, next question. The okay. uh, 21st uh, of March next year is also the date of the local community elections. Mm -hmm. um, do you combine that, uh, that activity together? Because you have you can organize local uh, uh, opponents and parties yeah. for that, for your goal. Yeah, it's a good idea. I'm, I'm, we're still thinking about the options there, also because there's like a lot of political parties that are going to do run a municipality campaign and uh, a slave vet campaign. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure yet on how that's going to shape. Not together with local uh, yeah. groups, of course. Yeah, it's a good, good idea. Mm -hmm. Um, and by that you can mobilize the international students in a lot of uh, Dutch cities, of course. Mm -hmm. We normally don't <coughs> um, vote. Yeah, and then can still have a role in it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your question. Um, next question. Hi, Nina. Thank you for your call uh, and talk about this. Um, it, are there any people that might be able to do certain stuff like marketing, campaigning, have experience with these kind of things that you would be glad with that would mail you or help you out setting this up because you only have two months? Yeah, we. <laughs> I just like set up the whole plan of the campaign and it's actually way more than I think we can handle. Um, we need to... 
we need, we, there's a bunch of events that we are going to organize, so if people have um, spaces, can also be autonomous spaces where we can do like um, uh, sessions with people, that, that would be good. Um, and we have a lot of campaign material again that needs to be spread out. Um, so that would also be nice if people help there. Um, I think those are the main things. Maybe specialists in marketing or technicians. What, I mean, you just told that there was a mail server being set up right now. Maybe people are actually experienced enough here that would like to help. Is that possible? How? Um, well, I think. I think, okay, on the technical aspect, we're good because we got that down. But, um, like, marketing things, it's mainly. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still rather naive, and so are my friends, about how the system works, how government works, and I'm just like, hey, we have a good idea, do what you want with it, and then there's all the house of cards kind of vibe that I don't understand. So I'd like a lot of, I'd like to have discussions about that with experts. Uh, and for marketing, actually, we don't really, I, I'm, I don't really want like a massive sort of marketing uh, company to get involved because. It's, it's very much a citizen's effort. However, feedback would be really good, like having sort of discussions about it, because, yeah, we don't know what the fuck we're doing, but we do have a sense of what we're doing, and like being able to um, go pa 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 with people, that would be good. So maybe I will be drinking away my nerves in the bar after this, just come to me. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. We are running out of time, so this was unfortunately the last question. Another very, very warm applause for this incredible action. Thank you.